All right, hi guys. We're uh, Group Four, uh, team named Radioactive Chipmunks, and uh, this is our game. So we're gonna get set up. But can I get uh, two volunteers from the audience to play? Uh, let's get you and in the back. Come on up. Uh, so some backstory. Uh, our game is set in the year 2050, and commercial space flight has become rampant, and it's kind of unregulated. So there's companies that are doing all kinds of crazy things, like building nuclear reactors and zoos on the moon. And the way that uh, our world kind of came into existence is one of those uh, carriers that was transporting monkeys, chipmunks, and radioactive material crash landed on a moon. And that's kind of the setup for where we are. So some of the radioactive material leaked and caused some evolution to happen. And so they're sort of smart creatures. And now they're battling for the supremacy of this small moon. Um, <laughs> yeah, so. Um, do some brief introductions. So I'm Daniel, and going from your left to right, we have uh, Lejeune, Eric, Sebastian in the black shirt, then we have Kevin, and Thomas, and then Eli on the very end there. So I think we might be ready. You guys ready? All right, let's go. Um, so uh, what you're looking at here is uh, basically the starting zone. So the map is laid out with uh, two bases, and the objectives are to A, kill the other team players as much as possible, and uh, B, destroy their towers. So in the very center of the map, in that big square structure, there's a tower that cannot be damaged until you destroy the two towers on the sides. Uh, we've got all kinds of ways to get around the map quickly with uh, trampolines and teleporters. Um, Thomas and Kevin worked a lot on the game mechanics to make everything really uh, smooth. They did a lot of tuning with the power-ups that you'll see uh, kind of around the map here. Um, and some things that I'd like to point out that are pretty awesome is uh, if we uh, can jump down to the ground real quick. So the rendering of the ground is actually happening. We're doing multiple rendering stages per every uh, frame update. So basically what's happening is we have a depth map and we're rendering the depth map to create the, the change in altitude. And then uh, we are running a very simplistic physics engine to kind of move you up and down around that. Um, you also notice we have some shadows. And after we get uh, the depth map rendering and then all of the actual uh, models rendered to the scene, we then uh, render the entire thing to a texture and then basically just put one big picture on the screen every frame. And we do that so that we can apply some effects. So right now you're looking at, you'll notice in the distance we have some, uh, some fog effects and some bloom effects that are being applied to kind of give you that illusion of distance and uh, fanciness. And uh, yeah, so when you get hit, we have some particle systems. So these particle systems that are being generated when you get hit here, um, there's a thousand particles that get created dynamically. And each individual particle has its own uh, complete set of properties. Uh, lifespan, size, color, all that stuff is being randomly generated. <laughs> and uh, we also have a sound system in place that can support up to uh, 64 uh, audio channels simultaneously. And it supports positional sounds. And we have all kinds of effects in there. Like we can actually do Doppler effect if things are moving towards each other uh, or away from each other. And uh, it kind of just makes the uh, world a little bit more filled out. And then if you notice, um, we're doing some Your turret is under attack. something. Your turret is at half health. Your turret is nearly destroyed. Oh. We're raising the audio. Has been destroyed. Enemy killing spree. <laughs> yeah, so all the cool little effects that are happening, like the lightning and uh, things that are being shown, like the little effect that just went on the chipmunk there, all of that is uh, just 2D images. And what we're doing is we display the 2D image, and then we get every player's uh, camera position, and we make the image, the normal of the image, face the camera to give it a 3D effect. So as you're moving around, the image is actually being updated so that it looks uh, like it's actually a 3D thing when it's just a simple 2D uh, picture. And so inside this platform here, you can <laughs> You can see the, uh, the towers have a very simplistic AI where they will track uh, enemy players and fire projectiles at them. And then the platforms are actually damageable. So either players or the towers, when they hit the platforms, can actually uh, destroy them. And the reason for that is the whole floor inside that area that we were just at 
will actually teleport you very far away. So if you're trying to kill that tower and you fall or the platform gets destroyed and you are forced to fall, it's kind of a penalty. And some things weren't meant to happen that fast, so. Yeah, so Eli did a great job with our models. As you can see, we have uh, bananas for the, the monkeys and we have uh, nuts for the chipmunks. <laughs> and then we also, we switched the camera view and you can actually pan around when you die for a pers different perspective of the map. And then, uh, so Sebastian worked a lot with the UI, so all this fancy text. It doesn't look very difficult, but actually getting the text on a specific point in the screen is pretty challenging, especially when you want to support multiple resolutions. So he did a great job with that. And, yeah, that's pretty much the game. So right now it looks like uh, our blue monkey here is trying to defend and he's not doing the best job of it, but luckily the turret's helping him out quite a bit, so that's very fortunate. Well, for the monkey team anyways. So if we're lucky, we might have a chance to grab some of these power-ups here and show you some of the effects. So this one right here is our speed power-up. So when he grabs this, he's going to be moving uh, almost uh, three times the speed here. And then if he misses these platforms, he will get teleported out of this area. So right now he's doing a pretty good job of jumping around and avoiding obstacles. But there he just, he just fell through and so it teleported him back out to the middle of the map. And we send you up high so that you have a chance to uh, kind of reevaluate where everybody's at. So it's a little bit difficult to tell with the projectile, uh, the project projector, but uh, what's happening actually is all those sound effects are positional, so if you were wearing headphones or you had a, a speaker system close to you, you could actually hear where the player was based on the sounds that they're making. So if they pick up a power, power up, you'll actually hear that sound relative to where they are uh, in the world compared to you. We also have, uh, we added these because it was, it was fairly difficult to, uh, to find people in the world, so we added these little uh, icons above them. And we have a, we have a dynamic system for uh, capturing the events and then playing the messages to the screen and the audio that goes along with that. And uh, it's a little bit delayed, but we thought that that would be a better uh, effect than if we actually just had it play over itself. So that could probably use a little bit more tuning. An enemy is unstoppable. Oh, sure. Yeah, so um, just to go over the UI, the uh, icons on the left and the right up at the top are the, the towers that are left. So the main tower is the big icon, and then the smaller icons are the two little towers. So you'll be unable to damage the, uh, the bigger tower. So if, if I could actually, uh, well, very nice, very nice. If we could get up on one of those platforms, we can show you the, uh, the shield effect that's being generated for that, that big tower in the middle of the, uh, the arena. Yeah, so if he jumps in there right now, he actually will be unable to, to damage that tower because the other ones haven't been taken down yet. Yeah, I wish we could let all of you play it because it's uh, a lot of fun. <laughs> And uh, let's see, what else do we have here? So the level layout, um, most of this came from, actually Thomas here on the end, he, uh, he did a great job with laying out the level and making sure that everything was kind of spaced fairly. Um, one thing that I had to harp on him about is we didn't have enough trampolines. I got really annoyed when I'd fall off something and I had to run halfway around the map, so Thomas did a great job of putting trampolines. That's one of the teleporters that Thomas implemented there too. Yeah, the, the, small, the smaller towers on the side are relatively easy to take down if you uh, coded the AI or participated in that because you can kind of predict where the shots will be before they fire. But um, we found that with some of the uh, testing we did with uh, our professor and our TA that if you weren't that familiar, sometimes it was uh, a little overpowering. So we tried to balance it as best we could. 
Um, unfortunately, the screen you're watching is somebody who participated heavily in the, the AI development for the tower, so they're pretty good at predicting the movement. Yeah, so as you can see here, the, the tower is hitting those, uh, those platforms and knocking them out, so he's actually out of places to stand almost here, and uh, yep, there we go. We've also got uh, moving platforms uh, vertically and horizontally, and we uh, everything that you can stand on has a, a collision box around it, so we can pretty much do anything that we want with these platforms. We can create them any size, any dimensions we want. And uh, everything is actually loaded into a JSON file, so all of the map details, all the resources, all the positions of the objects, it's all in a map file. So we can actually change that file and load a completely different map if we had had time to create a different map. Uh, so this power up right here, this will heal him, which is nice, but the, uh, the boost is temporary, so it, it's not a, a static HP increase. It'll actually fall off right there like you just saw. And then uh, our model loader that we wrote actually will support uh, over 20 different model formats. So uh, Eli, who was our artist, he exported things in uh, a, now I can't remember what the format is. Eli, what's the format? DAE? They're DAE files, which probably means as much to you as it does to me. Yeah, so, I mean, the game is, is not to be taken too seriously, as you can tell by some of the dying sound effects. It's, uh, it's definitely an exercise in how fast you can click the mouse. And as it's set up right now, it's a round system, so once the towers are destroyed, the round will end and it'll just restart, and you can continue to just play more and more rounds as as you see fit. We don't really have a, an in-game solution besides just looking to see how many rounds you've won and then, uh, and then ending it. The reason we did that for the demo is because um, depending on the skill of the players, you can end rounds probably in five minutes or less if you are just base rushing. So we let it loop just in case we got some really skilled players, which it looks like we got some good people. They're, they're definitely giving Eric a run for his money here. Sure. So does anybody have any questions? Yeah. Yeah, so one thing that we did when we initially created the uh, the projectile shooting is we had the model centered, so it was like a very true third-person camera. Um, we got some great feedback from our, our TA and our professor that it was really hard to, to see what you were shooting at because you were just looking at the back of your model, and especially on some of the monkeys, you're just kind of staring at their butt the whole time, which, you know. You can only stare at a monkey butt for so many hours of a day. So um, what Lejeune's solution actually, and I think it's quite elegant, is you can hardly tell, but the model's actually slightly offset to the left. Um, and then basically the bananas, uh, they arc slightly. So um, it's, it's very difficult to add a crosshair for that because of the, the arcing. So if you're on the elevator, for example, and you start shooting, you can tell that, the, uh, that you're moving upwards because the banana's position looks to be falling quite rapidly. But to answer your question, it's not out of way. Yes, so we're using a very uh, low resolution for the shadows, and uh, the reason for that is we were, during development, uh, it was the machines in the lab were not quite as powerful as these, so we're getting a large amount of lag. And in the early stages of our network development, having a high frame rate on the client was very important. Um, that's not the case anymore, but it's, we just didn't ever raise the resolution of the shadows. <laughs> Any other questions?
Yes. Um, could you, could you repeat that? I had a pretty hard time hearing you. So I think, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think what you're asking is that uh, you're asking why use uh, a death mac to generate the height difference, why not just statically do it? Okay, so we are uh, actually tiling, so we weren't really sure how big to make the map, and we wanted to give it kind of a random feel, so we went with that approach, and we probably could have gone static, but it was just a design decision that we made. Anyone else? Yeah. And you might be, oh, I'm, I'm, I apologize. It's really hard to see into the darker parts of the room. Oh, the music? So all of our uh, music came from soundbible.com, just a free sound source site. So some things that were kind of challenging in the product, uh, the development of the, the game were that um, the, the networking, we had a lot of interesting issues with that. So early on, we were using, uh, we were just sending uh, event triggers once, and if the client missed that, then we just missed it. So for example, when the, when the player clicks the mouse button to shoot a projectile, um, that is actually sent to the server first, and then the server processes how it's gonna handle that input, and then sends back the update, including the trigger for actually spawning the projectile that gets fired. Um, so byproduct of that is if you missed that trigger because it only gets sent one time, you would throw a projectile, the server would receive it because it's running twice as fast as the client, and so you would see the models jump back or die and stuff like that, but you wouldn't actually see anything fire from the hand. So Eric actually uh, came up with a way to create a buffer. Um, so basically we're creating a buffer of messages received, and we ran into a very interesting problem where if the server is running twice as fast as the client and you're saving all of the messages, then you're gonna very quickly have a huge buffer that you can't ever catch up with. So we actually came up with a system to just send all the triggers twice and drop every other message and it works great. <laughs> Then we, we, I think a lot of teams, we had some very interesting uh, issues with our, our models at first. Yes? Uh, so we have a single uh, light source that's just kind of in one of the corners of the map, and we're just drawing rays from that source. Uh, so if it intersects anything, we just draw a shadow on the other side of it. Defeat. Uh, reflections, that would be a great question for Lejeune. Lejeune, do you want to talk about reflections real quick? Uh, so we're using a cube map for the skybox. So the reflection is just, uh, we're just reflecting the camera ray from the cube to the skybox and get that pixel and render it onto the cube. You want to talk about anything else? Any other questions? Uh, <laughs> other to prevent them from like destroying your tower? Not really. It's there's no objectives or bonuses based on killing the, the enemy players. Shut down.
So all the, the lightning effects are just, uh, they're just 2D images that are, we have a sprite sheet that we're just kind of traversing to give the animated effect. So it looks really fancy in 3D and all that, but it's really just a picture. Yeah. Graphics is cool because you can, it's all about just tricking the person that's looking at it as much as possible. So you say, look at this awesome thing I did, and then you don't tell them that it's really just like, you know, something very simple. Yes? So we had, a, we had a tanker that was carrying monkeys, chipmunks for a zoo, and then a bunch of radioactive material. And so when that exploded, it just kind of sent the entire planet into chaos. I don't know if you've ever seen Dragon Ball Z, but it's kind of like that. So let's see, maybe we can get uh, some focus on killing those towers and finish this round up real quick. And then one thing that we did is uh, we found that just being able to jump once was made it sort of difficult to traverse the obstacles that we had and it was also just not as fun. So you have, uh, when you jump, you actually just have a certain amount of time that you can hold, you can be jumping. So if you want to do three really quick taps and space them out, you can. If you want to do two kind of taps and do a big double jump, you can. Or if you just want to spend it all in one big ass jump, you can do that too. Yeah. And if you're familiar with Strong Bad, that's actually Strong Bad that did the, the vocals there for us. Defeat. Yeah. So I think that's it, unless we have any other questions, guys. Thank you for letting us demo for you.